Welcome back to day four of 12 Games of Christmas. And we're getting musical today on 12 Games of Christmas. Don't forget, if you want to find out any more information, please click on the website. The link is below the video. Right. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Our featured game today comes from Jelly Squeak, and it is called Pitch Match. Now, Pitch Match is a sound-based game, and it's really fun to click. When you press Start, you'll see you've got two buttons here. And when you click on the left button, it gives you a sound, and you have to match that sound with the button on the right. And you have to use this slider to try and move your pitch of the sound around to see if you can get the right sound. When you get it right, you seem to go through the levels and there's loads of different ones, to, loads of different sounds to choose from. And you can see up at the top, I've got some attempts and I've only got so many attempts before I run out of lives. Am I gonna get it? Oh, just got it, there we go. And there's loads of levels and you go through and there's even some funny sounds at the end as well. So all in all, a really fun, easy to play, great game for 12 games of Christmas. And later on, I'm going to show you how this game works. So thank you so much to Jelly Squeak for sharing it on our 12 Games of Christmas studio. And if you want to put your own game on there, there are loads on there now. Add your project through the 12 Games of Christmas link that I'll put below the video. Right, on to our Scratch experts. And today our expert is the user... Yito Oboro One and Yito Oboro One has told us about how to use clones effectively and how to make sure that each clone has its own unique ID. Now, if you don't know what a clone is, a clone is basically a copy of a particular sprite that might only exist for a certain amount of time. Now, what we've got going on here, we've got a bit of code which says set clone ID to zero. So you've got a variable of clone ID. And then it's going to repeat four times. You can see here, repeating four times. Each time, it's going to add a new number to it, which means we're going to create a clone with the number one, two, three, and four. And then with that, you've got a bit of code on the right. This code, it says, when I start as a clone, and then it says if clone is one, if clone is two, if clone is three, if clone is four. And what we've done here is just put it a position so it goes somewhere different on the screen, just to show you how that works. Really nice bit of code. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yito Burrow One. I'll share the link to your studio as well by the video. All right, time for the top scratch tips today. And we're gonna be looking at Pitch Match. So I've created a remix of this project and I can see down here we've got five sprites and some code in the backdrop too. So let's have a look at the, first of all, these music notes. Well, that's a nice easy bit of code. It basically said, if the backdrop number is one, then it's gonna do a little repeating flashing sequence with its costume, so that's nice. Let's go onto the start button again, nice and simple. That says, if it is touching the mouse pointer, oh, we looked at this on the second day of uh, Christmas, it might even be the first uh, games of Christmas, uh, that hover so that it colors, let's see that in action, and you can see it just changing color. So nice bit of code there as well. Right, so let's get into a bit more of the nitty gritty of the game. Here on the backdrop, we've got just a little bit of code. And the first bit says, when the backdrop number is more than one, uh, then, well, it's just repeat until the backdrop number is greater than one. So basically, when the backdrop number goes higher than one, which basically means off this screen, it will uh, stop the music, which is a nice little feature. When we go on to the, now this is some text, and it says, you got it. And if you look at the costumes, there are some different uh, versions of the text it says no more attempt game over and nope and this is obviously used for different times and you can see it's got three different broadcasts you got it game over and nope so that will come up in probably these buttons code here so we'll keep an eye out for that over here we've got a nice easy start when flag click so we're just going to click the green flag and have it appear so there's the green button this is our play this is our sound button the button that we've got to try and match and you can see here, we've got a pick random minus six to plus six, negative six to plus six times by 10. Why is it times by 10? Well, that's to do with the fact that it is a sound effect. And the sound effect, when you click on the sound icons, you can see here we've got loads of different sounds. So that's gonna be useful. Uh, to change the different sound amounts, you have to do it multiplied by 10. So you can see here, it says change pick effect by the 
variable here, which is the pitch level, and the pitch level is the random. Now, actually, when you use the block, change the pitch level, it's it's kind of between 0 and 100. And if we had a random number between 1 and 100 and you had to try and find that exact number, that's going to be difficult. So we've simplified it. We're only going to use multiples of 10. So say, for example, it picked a random 4, then it's going to change that pitch level by 40. And all the guess, all the person that would need to do to guess is to use the number 4 and they would match it. Does that make sense? Quite complicated, but basically I've changed it so that instead of it's being out of 100, it's now just in the tens, but it's all hidden behind. Now also we've got the backdrop number here and it's going to play the sound of whatever backdrop number is minus 1. So let's say the level 2 screen is actually backdrop number 3. Well, that means that it will search and say, well, the backdrop is number 3, so I'm going to take one away, and that means I need to play sound number 2. That way, we don't have to keep writing code for every single sound, because the sounds you can see here at the top, they each have their own unique number. And apart from because we've used the home screen, the start game screen as number 1, every other page after that will, will match the sound that it needs to be. So number two will be sound one, page number three will be sound two. So that little code there means that it will play whatever sound for that level. So actually it's the backdrop changing that changes the level. And over here as well, uh, we have the pitch level again to make sure that and when you click on the, every time that you go through to the next round, it chooses another random number because otherwise that would be too easy. Okay, on the actual, button that we press to, to make our guess, you can see here we've got a guess variable. And the guess variable is linked to this slider. Now to create a slide effect, and you can use this for all sorts of games where you want to perhaps adjust something or you want the player to adjust it, you choose slide readout, slider, and you can change the slider range. And it's important that I match my random variables. So I need to make it to go from negative six to plus six. So that then affects the change of the sound in this sprite. So I copied all of the sounds from the green button sprite into the yellow button sprite to make sure they've all got the same sounds. So they're all matching, but the only difference is, is this is being changed by a pitch level of my guess, and the green one is being changed by a pitch level of the random event that we had in the green button. And then we've got a bit of code. Well, if the guess that I make is the same as the level pitch level, then I must have got it right. But because I've done it by multiplied by 10, I have to have make sure I put that in. So remember, I multiplied it by 10 in the original one. So if my guess multiplied by 10 equals the pitch level, then you've got it. And there's that broadcast, otherwise nope. So that's going to fire off those broadcasts to make sure that the right message comes up. Over on this side, this is your attempts. And basically, your attempts, you might lose one every time you get it wrong, but and it will broadcast game over if the attempts get lower than one. And that's just to make sure that bottom bit is just to see that if it's hidden or not hidden. So I really like this game. It's a really nice bit of code. Uh, I cleaned up a little bit from Jelly Squeak, but there we go. That's how you play it. You have a slider, and you use that slider to change the pitch. But really what's going on behind is it's multiplying it by 10 each time to make sure that the pitch is actually you notice the difference because if you just change the pitch by two or three, you wouldn't really notice. Oh, and there we go. There's my no more attempts game over and you can see that I've got attempt zero. So that bit of code works as well. Fantastic. There we go. That is our tips for today. And that is 12 games of Christmas done for day four. We'll see you in day five.